This video presents how to use a add new column and add new measure from Power BI. And for data sets, we are going to use this NBI games, these data sets that's available here at this website in which will give to us a set of entries in which we can process with Power BI. So first step we are going to do is to import this data set in with Power BI after downloading that. You can then just go here, get data, choose here other options, and then say you want to work with files, JSON file, and then connect to a specific JSON file. It will ask for the selection of the file, and then we do that. Now you have to wait until it is all imported by Power BI. Once Power BI has imported the content of JSON file, you can see all the fields that are created here as columns available, okay, our information. And the idea of this video is that we are going to add new computed columns after this first, first import of data and also create measures, which are some kind of consolidated or aggregated information based in the whole data set. So in this case, we have no additional processing to do, just close and apply to get all this data available in our model. Now we have just to wait the model to be created. Now, what we had, the whole data already was loaded. And we have here a lot of columns available. The columns that are available for each entry we had in the JSON file we have utilized as data sets. We can choose any kind of visualizations for displaying this data. In this case, I will just choose this table visualization which will show just a set of columns and rows we have in this data set. Let's choose some basic from the existing columns, like what's the team name, like what is the player name that should be some columns like that. Okay, it's displaying, just a moment, okay, it's, it's right here. Okay, we have here then team's name and player's name. And we could choose any other column that is here already available to be utilized. Like the date that the game has happened. Okay, which could show a lot of columns from this date, like you can see here, or just, just a set of them, right? And okay, it's here. I just need to observe it was it has breaking here the structure. Just a moment. So let's return here and create again the table, include these initial columns. Because our goal here is to add a new column that's not here available, a column that's going to be computed. So again, adding here the name, adding here the name of the teams, name of the player. Okay, yes. Then the date the player has played. Okay, here it's all perfect, like we had wanted. And now we have just one last column to add here. That's the points. How many points this player has performed in this specific game, playing for this team. Okay, here's our table. But let's suppose we need to present the dates, but not like that. We need to display in some kind of official game for displaying these dates. 
And then we need to add a new column, a new column for this data set that's not here available. So what we can do? We have a lot of options to reach this functionality. Um, one functionality, maybe if you click here, there's some kind of shortcut. Yes, some shortcut here, new column is one option. Another option, right click, new column as well. So you can see we have two options for adding this column. No matter which option you click. So I'm going to click here, new column. And it's going to display here above the panel for writing the formula for creating this new column. Because as it's a new column being created in an existing data set, of course, you are not going to input manually the value for each column. It has to be one computed column. The value needs to be calculated. So here's the column name. The column name defined here. We need to match. Okay, you see it has disappeared. So let's do that again. You need to take care in doing that. Well, you want to give one specific name and the names need to match. So if you want to change here this column name, you see here the name column. If you add, I don't want that to be named column. I want that to be like game date format. And then here I'm going to place some kind of formula, DAX formula, that's the syntax we use to, to compute values here, that's going to prepare this date. In this case, I'm just going to erase this part of the formula with the name of the column. And then it's going to format the date field that's identified by this date dot dollar date. That's the field name here. And here the format we want to display these dates. So we can take out all these four columns here later on. But this name here needs to match. So what we can do? You can take here the formula name. You can just click here first for committing the formula. It changes automatically the column name. That was very good. So now I can just come here, select the. I can unselect, or we can initiate with both and then take take out. We can just select the new column. Okay, it was selected already. It was spelled here. You see, November, the month, December, the day and the year in a different format. And then if you want, you can just take out the original date columns and now it's going to be um, more, more dedicated with a few columns. And if the column order are not appropriate, you can just come here in this panel and change that for displaying the columns in a different order. So that's the procedure for adding new columns. Now let's add a new measure to our data set. And the difference of a measure to a column is that the column produces one individual value for each entry of our data set as the measure would be calculated over the whole data set or over a filter with a subset of the data set but the idea of the measure is some kind of consolidation taking the values from more than one row more than one entry and then compute one certain value what i'm going to do now with you we are going to create a new measure that's going to display what was the maximum value for this points call. That means what was the maximum amount of points was performed in one single game based on this data set. So the way to do that is very similar to the way we have created the new column, but the difference is how to display that. So depending on the of the measure you create, the visualization for displaying that would be 
different. But let's see how to first how to create that and then how to display that. First, create a new measure here, clicking this button for instance, or clicking here with right click new measure, no measure. Clicking here, it it shows the same situation we have with the new column for writing the formula, and here we have the um, the possibility for defining the measure name and the formula. I have here with me the formula already written in the DAX syntax. It's here. Is the measure named max point, and here there's um, a few functions we are going to to use. The first thing you could be asking is why max with double x and why why this all here. The idea here is that I would like to process all data from the data set, and this data should not be impacted by any filters that's been applied in this page. So just all and the name of the data set that's here is for saying I want to process all these values, all these values, but it references all columns. Then here in the second parameter, what's the column I would like to consider. So as you can see here, play, teams dot players. So it comes to here dot points here. So it's going to use this column here. And then I would like to calculate the maximum value. And then for this purpose, when we want to calculate max with this kind of parameters, it's max with double x function. There exists as well the max with single x, but then it is utilized in a different way, maybe for columns, not for measures. Okay, now let's just confirm that. And as you can see here, we have the new column we have just created before, and here the new measure we have just clicked created. As this value should be the same for all the entries, make no sense to display that in a table together. I could display, of course, no problem, but it will just duplicate the value for each row. So my idea here, let's take some kind of different visualization like this card here. Let's just take that, create a new visualization here for this proposed, and then just select here the measure you have just created. And what it says here, that the biggest values available for the points column is 8, 1. And how can we ensure that's right? You can go here to your table view, and here we have the points column someplace it's scrolling side. We are going to find this column here, almost there, because it's sorted alphabetically. So, teams, players. Okay, it's not exactly sorted alphabetically, but no problem. It's the points column. We are almost there. Here, here is the points column. So clicking here, it's going to sort to us. Here's from the smaller to the biggest value. So a lot of players has make no, no, no points in a specific game. So you can just sort that, wait for, for the sorting, sorting, descending. And here you can see the biggest value is 8-1. So our measure has calculated that correctly when it displays the values here. And this value here is not dependent from any kind of filters in this screen. So guys, that was the goal for this video. Show to you how to create a new column or a new measure and a little bit about its formulas for writing how to compute these values. Thank you for your attention.